Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers 27. Then came the daughters of Zephelthad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Micah, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters, Mahalah, Noah, and Hagla, and Milcah, and Tarzah. Those are two names, Milcah and Noah. They're repeated names in the Bible. Now you're going to see these names uh, four times in the Bible. Uh, 2635 we saw him here 3611 and then in Joshua about the situation here in verse in chapter 27 and they stood before Moses and before Eliezer the priest remember Aaron's gone he's died Eliezer is the priest and not many people get to go up to Moses and start speaking to him but here are these daughters right up to the, Moses and to the priest and before the princes the leaders of the nation and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle the congregation so they walk up to the tabernacle and they greet Moses they have a a situation and it says here our father that's uh, Zohelfah dad died in the wilderness okay and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah. Had nothing to do with that. But died in his own sin. Well, look at that. They're acknowledging their father's a sinner. They're acknowledging their sins. They say, listen, our father, he, he was not of the rebellion. The guy died in the wilderness. He died of his own sin. And had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family? Because he has no son. And it's true. It's when you get to a, when you get to a generation of a man's family, because the the woman takes the husband's name, and the children takes the husband's name. And I look at right now, as far as I see, as far as my my father's seed, my father's family, Hayward, it passes on to my son Henry. But if he were not to have any wife, he were not to have any sons, that's it. That Hayward name dies. And what they're saying is, listen, our father died. He had no sons. We're just daughters. We get married. Well, we're going to take on our husband's names. And then in that case, our father's name will be dead. So he'll for that. It will be gone. And as far as what we looked at in Numbers 26, when we came, all these numbers, all these families that we looked at are going to get part of the land and their names. They come to Moses and say, well, Zohilfadad, and I apologize if I'm saying his name wrong. I don't think the Lord is going to you know, rebuke me for it. The doors are saying, listen, there will be no land in Israel called after our father. And then with time, we're going to die and then the name of our father will die out. He had no sons. He wasn't in no rebellion. So finish verse 44. Give unto us therefore a possession among the brethren of our father. Where our family dwells in that land. Give us a right to land. In the name of our father. And Moses brought the cause before the Lord. And Moses like, oh, yeah, what do I do? So he brings it to God. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The doors of so hope so for that speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession. It will be in Joshua uh, chapter 17. 
Give them possession of inheritance among their father's brethren. So where their family, their father's brethren, his father, his brothers, and all that, where they are, give them a piece of land. And thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. They have no son. They have no brothers. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Now, not only Noah, Haggah, and Milcah, and Tarshah, if this case ever comes up again, where he, and you'll read in the Bible, there are some places where it says he had no sons. But daughters, it does happen again. So he says, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die, for whatever reason, and have no son, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter, which we just saw now. And if he have no daughter, he has no children, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his brethren, brothers, uncles, and if he have no brethren, boy, he's really out of there. Then he shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren, be uncles. And if his father have no brethren, the family's really shot. Then he shall give his inheritance unto his kinsmen. Oh, that's Ruth chapter 4. That is next to him of his family. That's Ruth chapter 4. And he shall possess it. Remember Ruth? She married... And her husband died. And her father-in-law, the father of her husband, died. And there was no one else, just her and Naomi. Now the right of the dead, where's it going to go? Boaz is going to marry him, but before Boaz says, I'll take you and I'll marry you, I will do that kinsman. There's a kinsman that's more closer than I am. i got to check with him first. And then you go in Ruth chapter 4 about you'll mar his inheritance. So you're looking at Ruth chapter 4 in practice of what 20... Had there been no chapter 27 right here, you would have no story of Ruth and Boaz as far as the land. Now, Ruth and Boaz are in the family of David, the kingship, Judah. And you've got a line that runs to Jesus Christ. How does Jesus Christ get the kingship? He gets it through David. How does he get a partial of that land? He gets it through Boaz. And we see the law here. I forget their names, but Ruth's husband and her, and her father-in-law... That was it. There was no other male kin. When Naomi comes into Bethlehem, she doesn't seek anybody out that would help her. It looks like the entire family has gone. Wiped off. And Ruth goes out to work one day. She says, well, what field are you working in? What? Where'd you get this food from? Well, I got it from a man named Boaz. And then Naomi, the lights come up. Hey, that's one of our kindred. And he can take over the land. That's rightfully his. And if he had no daughter, verse 9, then he shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. And these women are going to get married in Joshua. Or maybe by the end of number. It's a place they're going to get married, and they're going to marry within their own tribe. So it stays in what name? It stays in Manasseh, the son of Joseph. No daughter, and they shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. If he hath no brethren, then he shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. Ruth don't have any of this, but Boaz and whoever that unnamed near kinsman is. But he can't do it. For whatever reason, that would violate his inheritance. So now we see Boaz. And his father have no brethren, then he shall give it into inheritance his kinsmen, that is next to him. Now let's go to Ruth chapter 4. And see if we can find this real quick. Yes, in, um, Ruth 4, 5 through 8. 5 through 8. Ruth 4, 5. But there's one where he tells her that I am... Oh, you have the one she's... Yeah, she says 3, chapter 3, verse 13. It's all over this. Terry this night. And it shall be in the morning 
that he, that's the second advent, that he will perform unto thee the part of a kinsman. Well, let him do the kinsman's part. But if he will not do that part of the kinsman to thee, then will I do the part of the kinsman to thee. So he keeps that family of Benelect. Oh, I remember his name now. Going. Uh, I believe she marries Chillin, verse 9. But look at chapter 4, verse 1. In Brew. Then went Boaz up to the gate and sat him down there. And behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz, that's what we're reading right now, somehow he's a kinsman. It doesn't say if he was his brother, his uncle. It says, if he have no bread, let him shall give inheritance unto his father's brethren. If his father have no bread, so it's not his brother, then he shall give his inheritance unto a kinsman. Behold, the kinsman of Boaz. Who knows who that can be? But it's not his brother. Spent came by. He said, hold such a one. Turn aside. Sit down here. And he, you know, he says, blah, 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 blah. In verse 3, he said unto the kinsman, Naomi that is come out of the country of Moab, selleth a partial of land. That's back there in Numbers 27. Which is our brothers in Limonex. He's dead. Naomi gave him two sons. They are dead. He doesn't even have daughters. Right now, if we leave it just like this right now, Elimelech's name will be dead and gone forever. If Boaz doesn't do something, or this kinsman does something. If they don't do anything, that's it. That's it. As soon as Naomi dies, his family dies. Who's Ruth? She, she's a Moabitess. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, Buy it before the inhabitants, witness, before the elders of the people. If thou will redeem it, redeem it. Okay? But if thou will not redeem it, tell me. That I may know, for there is none to redeem it besides thee. Run back to 27. I mean, that's what you read. Beside thee. And I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Okay? So... These two are related to Elimelech somehow, but they're not brothers. It's of Elimelech's father. Then said Boaz, What day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, see, it's Naomi's name, she's the wife, thou must buy it also with Ruth the Moabites, the wife of the dead, her husband. Her husband's dead. To raise up the name of the dead of this inheritance. And that's what we see over here, 27. We also see it in the law where, you know, a guy marries a woman, she produces no children, he dies, and then his brothers to marry the woman. And then, you know, that seven men that they brought to Jesus, they all die in the woman. Here's all this thing about the land. What is it about the land? It's a name on the land. And we sort of got that in, in America. We've got not only a, a state named Washington, but we probably got cities named Washington. We got streets named Washington. And we got divisions and, and subdivisions called Washington Heights and stuff like that. Well, that's what's going on here. And in Israel, the land, that heaven of what their heaven is, is not New Jerusalem. It's to say that this partial land, and you would see it among the old mountaineers of the, of the old European nations. You would see it as we were watching these folks in Alaska. This land was my father's land it was my great grandpa's name land it was my great great grandpa's name and what was their name it was george it was tom it was smith and then you get the last name it'll be like this is our land and that's what's going on here thou must buy also ruth the moabites the wife of the dead to raise up the name of the dead for inheritance and the kids said i cannot redeem it for myself at least i mar my own inheritance so he's already got one and now if he marries this woman, he can't. Redeem it. Redeem thou my right to thyself. Now I cannot redeem it. And Boaz goes about it. So what is the redemption of this we see with Ruth? Uh, verse 10. More Ruth the Moabite, the wife of Milhah. He's dead. He's gone. Have I purchased to be my wife to raise up a name of the dead that's what the that's what the daughter said in number twenty seven, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren. Numbers twenty seven. And then 
Go to the very last verse and look what Boaz get. And Obad beget Jesse, and Jesse beget David. And guess where David runs to? Ruth and Boaz are Jesus' great, 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 great grandparents. And all Boaz did was follow Numbers 27. So you just think, oh, what's these bunch of women? Isn't it amazing how one of them is named Noah? And he was a just man, and only his family was saved. Milka, they got that name from a sister of the family of Abraham. And from Milka, you get Rebecca, which came of Isaac's bride. And he got Jacob and Esau. And you look at this chapter. Oh, what's the big deal about this chapter? Oh, I got to read the Old Testament. You just read the, story, the greatest love story of any thing that anybody ever can write. I'm told, I think I think it's Benjamin Franklin for this perverted uh, club in European somewhere that he took the book of Ruth and he just perverted it. No, it's not a pervert. It's a wonderful story. And it's a story of Jesus Christ. And I may be wrong about that. I know one of the books in the Bible he perverted. And verse 10, and if he have no brethren, then he shall give his inheritance unto a father, his father's brother. And if he and if his father have no brethren, here we go. Then he shall give his inheritance unto his kinsmen. Notice the wording that is next to him of his family, and he and shall possess it, Boaz. And it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute and judgment, as the Lord commanded Moses. Boom. End of story. And we left off right where we are in Ruth. And the Lord said unto Moses, Get thee up unto the mount Abram. And see the land. Now, how God did that, I don't know. Moses does not enter the land, but the Bible records at the end of Deuteronomy, he saw the entire land. He saw from Dan as far as north, as far as Beersheba, as far as south. Now, maybe God gave him eagle eyes, but I don't know. What's that? Anything's possible. Anything's possible. Yes, it's amazing. I mean, he just didn't see it. I mean, the Bible records he saw the land, but he wasn't in there. Which I have given unto the children of Israel. So that the United Nations. And when thou ha hast seen it. See it? When thou hast seen it. That's going to be Deuteronomy the last few chapters. Not yet. See Deuteronomy runs along with numbers. Thou shalt be gathered unto thy people. He's going to die. As Aaron thy brother was gathered. Aaron's already dead. For ye rebelled against my commandment in the desert of Zin. There's a Zin desert and a Sin desert. In the strife of the congregation. To sanctify me in the waters before thy eyes. Their eyes, excuse me. That is the water of Meribah, which means bitter. How are we talking about Ruth? Wait a minute. Let's go back to Ruth chapter 2. And it was still called bitter. Mara was the one with the. Um, it's still the same name. It, it's bitter. And Ruth, and Naomi says, Call me Mara. For the Almighty has dwelt very bitterly against me. And you say, Well, come on, give Moses a break, God. Let him in the land. I mean, he just got angry. What's the problem? He smoked the rock twice. He sh I know he should have spoken to it. And yet, you can't allow Moses to go in because then you'd be able to do the mass every single day, every once a week, every week for 52 weeks, and then you have to let the people in. You got to speak to that rock. You got to do what God told you to do. And God says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. There's no other way. And you got to feel sorry for Moses. Now, Moses was a wonderful man, but he sinned. And Moses is a wonderful pastor. And you need to study the life of Moses if you're going to be in a pastor. Because watch this. You're not going in the land. Now, wouldn't you get mad? After all you've been putting up with. And everything that Israel has put you through. I mean, and Moses spake unto the Lord, saying... Let the Lord, the God of all spirits of all flesh, 
set a man over the congregation. Oh, well, look at that. Now, he got mad at them at that rock when he saw, you rebel, bam, bam. Right now, God says, you're, you're going to die. You're not going in the land. And, and you know what Moses' mind as a pastor? Lord God, what about them people? Moses' last request in the Bible is, Lord, what about the people? I know a few pastors, they, they don't match this. Many of your crystal churches and your high, lofty, worldly churches, the pastor ain't like this. Well, watch, let's go further. And the Lord, let the Lord God of the spirits of all flesh set a man over a congregation which may go out before them Israel they need guidance God they need to go they need to know where to go and the which may go in before them not only is he outside the congregation but he's also inside the congregation he's visiting the people Lord he's looking out for the welfare and he's coming in and he's visiting the people he's helping them He's a shepherd for the sheep that are in the flock, and he's a shepherd for the fleet for the sheep that's outside the flock. And the shepherd goes out while the sheep are feeding. He goes to the next pasture land and he looks for poisonous plants. He looks for broken glass. He looks for anything that's going to hurt those sheep, and he removes those obstacles. And then he brings those sheep into a ground that he's already been upon. Look at pastors that way. And which may bring them in, into the land. That the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep, which has no shepherd. He wants somebody to, to lead. Even though as angry as they got from day one, that they rejected. Who, who did God did call you to come and get us? You made us. Swords and, and, and Pharaoh's thing. It's would the God that we could go back. Would the God that we were there. Would it, you brought us out in this world and kill us. Blah, 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 blah. It's just, man, they need a shepherd to guard. Don't send them in that land. With, now, I don't know if Moses is thinking about him. I don't think he is. That a man. And the Lord said to Moses, Take thee Joshua the son of... Now, I can just imagine Joshua at that moment. If he's standing there. Joshua has been Moses' right-hand side this entire time. He has seen the trials. He has seen the trouble. He's had ten men go against him as spies. One man for him, Caleb. And now everything that Moses is going to go and have and has done, and everything that has happened now is going to be put upon Joshua. If I was Joshua, I'd be like, uh-uh. The son of Nun. There's your only none in the Bible. It's a man. That's a man's name. So if you got a nun who's a woman called by a name by a man, I guess you have problems with identity. A man in whom the spirit, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, and lay thy hand upon him, and set him before Elias and the priest. And before the congregation and give him a charge. Joshua is a military leader. He only loses one battle. In their sight. And thou shalt put some of thy honor upon. No one says some. Moses had a lot of honor. Sort of. That all the congregation of children of Israel. May be obedient. <laughs> Shall we go back and review what they were with 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 Moses? And it began, here comes the Egyptians. Huh? We have no water, no food, no water, no food, no water, no food, no food and water. And he shall stand before Eliezer the priest, who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment in the Urim. That's it. And that was Exodus twenty-eight thirty. It was the Urim and the Pharaoh. I don't know what happened to Pharaoh. But there's the Urim. That's in the breastplate of the high priest. <laughs> so 
Anything Joshua needs to know, he has to come to the Eliezer of the priest. And somehow that Urim lights up those 12 stones. You ever see the Simon game? It lights up. Before the Lord, at his word shall they go out. And at his word they shall come in. Both he and all the children of Israel with him. Even the, all the congregations of Joshua, by the guidance of Eliezer, the high priest, by God, is going to command these children, we're going. We're not going. We're resting. We're moving. We're marching. We're going to fight. We're not going to fight. We're going to cast lots. We're going to look at the whole book of Joshua, but we got Deuteronomy. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him. Look at that. There's no bitterness with Moses. You're not going, and we are, we read in place where Moses said, "Can I please?" And no, no, I don't want to hear it no more. Like Josh, I mean, like uh, Paul with those with those thorns. No, no, I don't want to hear it no more. I said it. It's going to happen. Moses, can you take care of those people, please? Yep, it's going to be Joshua. Do this, 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 and he does it. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him, and he took Joshua and set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation, and he laid his hands upon him. Gave him a charge, as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. So we're going to be getting finishing the book of Numbers pretty soon. Then we're going to get into Deuteronomy, the orders to the ones that are going in the Promised Land. Deuteronomy, Moses is going to die, and Joshua, Jehovah's save, is going to take them in the land.